Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as all glory to Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be continuing with Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 13, verse 22. And the chapter is entitled, Dhritarashtra Quits Home. And the class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all glory to Shri Prabhupada. Oops, I think we lost Maharaj. <laughs> Either that or he just got tired of me. <laughs> I'm sure he'll get from back. You, was it? Was it, that was not from you? No, 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 Maharaj. I think it was a connection issue. So I'm sure he will join back again. Um, okay. We will wait for him to join back. I think he's joining back. It says 19. Let me see. There is Maharaj. There we go. Haribo. Haribo, Maharaj. As I was announcing you, Maharaj, we, we, we lost your connection. Yeah, I'm struggling with uh, some weak internet here. I'm in India, you know. <laughs> Marsh, we, we don't have your we we can't see your video so i'm assuming it must be a, a connection issue maraj yeah I, i'm keeping the video off okay it will help with the audio mm -hmm. okay maraj no problem yeah. Marge. Marge, you can start whenever you're ready, Marge. We're going to miss your okay. personal features association, Marge. Not having to see you, but we at least get to hear your voice. Um, I'll come on at the end when we have. <laughs> okay, Marge. Okay. So this is uh, Vidura speaking to his elder brother, Dhritarashtra. You have been blind from your very birth. We I think we lost Maharaj again, so we're going to patiently wait for him to join us. Yeah, Mar Maharaj is having some issue, um, internet issues because he's still in India. So we're going to patiently or with austerity um, wait for Maharaj. Srimati is saying that yesterday was fine, but today again the trouble started. I guess it's just... The weather's having a mood swing. 
or either that or Krishna is teaching us patience and tolerance while trying to get as much as we can from Marge's words. Let's see, he hasn't come back yet. I'm sure he's trying to reconnect. Oh, wait, I think he just came back. Yeah, Mara just back. You can't hear me yet, though. Yeah, we can't hear Maharaj yet. Yeah, must be the connection issue. Let's see. Symptoms of... The symptoms of all the the red belt and these Dhritarashtra were all one after another. Pointed out by the door in the body of Dhritarashtra were signs of apaksaya, or dwindling of the material body before the last stroke of death. The body is born, develops, stays, creates, so the body dwindles and then is vicious. The foolish men want to make a permanent settlement of the perishable body and think that their estate, children, society, country, etc. will give them protection. With such foolish ideas, they become overtaken by such temporary engagements and forget altogether that they must give up this temporary body and take a new one. Again, to arrange for another term of society, friendship of love, again, to perish untimely. <clears throat> they forget their permanent identity and become foolish active for occupation, forgetting altogether their prime duty. Saints and sages to the real situation. But they take such saints, sadhus, and saints as parasites of society, and almost all of them refuse to hear the words of such sadhus and saints. Although they welcome show bottle sadhus and so called saints who can satisfy their senses. Vidura was not a sadhu to satisfy the ill sentiment of Vidura. He was correctly pointing out the real situation of life and how one can save oneself from such catastrophe. Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pachamine, never say Sasunyavari, Pasyatya Deis. Once you go to the Sindhu, the Sindhu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, here is an example of a typical materialist who is an illusion about the goal of life. By saintly persons. Which is uh, Fedora, 
and in making plans about his everything in the material world. I think we all have to chant really hard for the next few minutes until Maharaj comes back to get his um his ring his, his wife is our friend back. I'm here Hi, Maharaj. Okay. uh the time factor for a devotee is a friend and for the non-devotee it's the worst thing that could possibly happen because whatever they work for whatever they aspire to do in life becomes dwindled by the time factor and ultimately destroyed and therefore uh, the time factor is also showing how the material body simply goes through different stages and at the later stage of the material body it no longer continues to develop it simply breaks down and then death becomes the next phase and then one has to again enter into another womb of another mother and they again take birth and begin the whole process again mayaravase gacho base gacho habubu dubai jeev krishna das hey vishwash Kolida the Dukanai. This, these are the words of Shilabal. In one of his bhajans, but he explains that their defeat in everything they do in life, they continue to try for success. Not, it's like it's, uh, it's almost like a a dog. You know, you chase a dog away and it'll come back again you chase them away come back again you show the stick it runs but it will come back again it can't and felt like sometimes you the word dog obstinacy obstinacy the dog is uh, can't take lessons when it wants to do something it'll do it no matter what uh, you have this dog-like mentality of the conditioned souls who cannot see the inevitable uh, dwindling of their life and the foolishness of all their endeavors. And he's getting a lot of mercy. Vidura is actually an incarnation of Yamaraj. to his Bible, to his relatives, despite the fact that everything is, is he's born blind he's gets he has no position in life anymore although he's born in a royal family and he's also the son of yasabe still uh, um he can't understand his good fortune the Prabhupada wants to make a point here he says there are many well wishers in the world who do their best to help others come to the right understanding of what is the purpose of life and how to achieve it. But they don't want, they take such persons as being Called 
material world because you see that we lost marriage again he'll come back really i really thank devotees for being so patient <laughs> We're back again. Okay. Um, let's see, for those of us who are a little bit averse, not averse, but adept in a living life in this material world, practicing Krishna consciousness, we see the inevitable force of time moving us towards the end of this body. So therefore, the devotee always has to think, I have so much time left. I don't know how much time left, but let me use every bit of time for the ultimate goal of life in Krishna consciousness. So he has, and they want to use every bit of that time in, uh, in furthering their Krishna consciousness and getting to the point where they actually are fixed at the lotus feet of the Lord in loving devotion service, which is available so easily in this age by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the, in the Sankirtan movement. So um, we can learn here strongly what is it like when one becomes attached and how these attachments cause one to think that what is beneficial is not important and what is unbeneficial is what I should be going for. That's the nature of my own. So, um, yeah, and we see that everywhere, the conditioned souls. Prabhupada says when people get old, instead of using their time for Krishna consciousness, they go to some resort area. If they have a little bit of money, they go on vacation and they just want to enjoy like they did when they were young. Or they go to golf courses and just smash a little ball into a holes and call that you know, fun. So they waste their valuable human life. And as time runs out, time becomes more valuable. Just like when you have a lot of money, you may, you know, waste a little bit here and there and you still have a lot. So you, you don't really lose anything, although you lost something. But when you have little, you really pinch the pennies. You really keep everything controlled to use the maximum amount of, of money that you have left in the best possible way. So time is like that. Time is like that. As time runs out, it becomes more and more important that we use every moment for Krishna consciousness. And of course, no one really can say how much time have less than the materials. They're cut. These are quite dangerous and precarious. People are dying wholesale every day at different ages. In, in, in Kali Yuga, as opposed to previous yugas, people would live out their life and then die at an old age. But in this age, people are dying like crazy. Cancer is becoming a, a widespread disease now. And that even in young people, I was just reading a report just yesterday how so many young people are coming down with cancer. So yeah, it is very difficult age. It's <laughs> never stable in this age on any level. What to speak about the material. So therefore one has to think, all right, I got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. I'm in his movement. 
I may, or all I have to do is use my time to uh, practice Krishna consciousness. So that takes a little bit of awareness of the value of life. We should never think to waste any moment in Krishna in, in life because each moment is very valuable. And as Prabhupada says, you can become Krishna conscious in one moment, or you can take hundreds of lifetimes and still not become Krishna conscious. So it depends on your, your seriousness and the execution of your devotion. So uh, this is the most serious thing we can do because otherwise we, we might, and Prabhupada always makes this point, but one knows what kind of birth they're going to get in their next life if they have to take birth. So nothing is guaranteed. So one should always think, I want to go back home, back to Godhead. I want to develop my love for Krishna. I want to become Krishna's uh, Krishna's devotee. I am Krishna's devotee, but I want to become it in actuality, in the form of everything I do and say. And that way, one will, this one is happy. One is happy. And because they know, my focus. And even if my body breaks down, it doesn't matter because I'm still fixed in devotion. Okay. I'm going to stop here and see if we can open it up for questions and comments. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Be a um, what, okay, what I'm going to do, Maharaj, is um, we will we were suggested to turn our video off, hoping that that might help the internet on your yeah. end, so we at least could hear the last few minutes clearly. Thank you, Krishna. Would like to ask devotees for any questions, any comments. I'm going to stop sharing. That way, uh, we can wait. Where's this? Um, there we go. Okay. Would like to ask devotees if any questions, any comments, any reflection, please uh, do post your question or you can unmute yourself and ask your question. And um, Marge, um, you mentioned a point, Marge, that your Prabhupada says, which I've heard many times. And, uh, you know, it takes just a moment to become Krishna conscious. But at the same time, we know that it's such a struggle because of so much, you know, um, bombardment and, you know, distraction. So how can we really develop the, the understanding of the importance, marriage of what it means to take, that we can become Krishna conscious in one moment? Like, how can we develop that? And we just lost March when I asked that question. Very well. <laughs> I guess it's not a very good question. <laughs> March will come back. Wait, is, did he come back? Let me see. He will come back. We will patiently wait for Maharaj to come back. Krishna must be testing our patience for some reason. I really feel he's testing our patience. The more we want to hear from Maharaj, the more we face his internet issues. Wait, he's back. Is he back? He's not back yet. Okay. We will wait. I really, really appreciate devotees staying on and waiting for Marish to come back despite the internet issues. Yeah, that's the least we can do. We just have to respect them. And so it's just good. pure nectar, right? Oh, there he is. Haribo. <laughs> We're back. Haribo, Maharaj. <laughs> So happy you're back, Maharaj. Um, so Maharaj, I was I'll, I was asking is how can we re develop the understanding how, what it means to be Krishna consciousness in a moment? Like we've heard it, I've heard it, but in a moment is like snap of a finger, and we and sometimes you know the mind is saying, but how can we become in a snap of a finger? How can we develop that mood, Maharaj? Well, 
From this moment on, I'm yours. I have no desire to desire. Did we actually really hear that? Yes, Maj. I heard the last one when when we say to Krishna, "I am yours." In this one moment, that's the part that, that I caught. When you say it sincerely, that my dear Lord, I am yours. Whatever you, whatever you want from me, whatever, just guide me to your lotus feet. I'm willing to. I'm fully surrendered to whatever you want. Wow! Well, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. I have. I'm sorry, Maharaj. It has to be done from the heart. It's not something you can just say. You have to sincerely mean it. So, Maharaj, yeah. I have a big, big piggyback question from that, and that is when we hear the word surrender. You know, the mind says, oh, my God, give up everything, live like a pauper, you know, just live on peanuts, you know, that th then the fear factor comes in. So how can we overcome the fear factor when surrendering, Maharaj? Well, it's not about giving up things. It's about giving, it's about attaching yourself to Krishna. We see that in the life of many personalities who perform devotional service. They were in poverty stricken. Many of them even were quite opulent. So that's not the criteria. The criteria is to give up those things that are contrary to our progress in devotion. In other words, our material desires. Thank you, Marge. Wow. In the material world, that's all. Just stop trying to be happy here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Your happiness is in devotional service. And the prayer you shared, Maharaj, is really powerful too. Very simple, yet from from the heart. But you, but like you said, it has to come from the heart. Like we have to have to have that desire. And it, the the rest of that particular statement is that the Lord, when the Lord hears that, the Lord says, then. He will take charge of our life and lead us back to him. Mm. 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 Thank you, Maharaj. Stop, wow. making your plans. Stop making your plans for, for your own happiness and just yeah. make plans for serving Krishna. <laughs> That's wow. Marge, uh, before I ask my next question, I'll ask, I'll open up to devotees who want to ask a question. Please, uh, if if devotees have a question to ask, please do jump right in. You can raise your hand so that I don't miss anybody. Or you can put it in the post, I mean, in the chat, and, and I can uh, read out the question for you. Just going down the line, the list here. Um, let me see. Marge, while others are thinking... Marsh, you mentioned, um, oh my God, I just slipped my mind, Kali Yuga mind, Hare Krishna. You mentioned, oh, I have to think about my question again. Oops, Krishna Shaitanya, I slipped my mind right now. Something that you mentioned, um, anyway, I'll, I'll ask for devotees to ask questions um, while others, while I'm thinking about my question. Anyone has a question? I don't mind um, calling on someone. Oh, wait, there's a hand up. Sri Devi, I was hoping you would ask a question, Mataji. My dear Anu, Anasi, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And my humble obeisance is to you, dear Guru Maharaj, and to all the assembled devotees, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, on this point of becoming Krishna conscious, many times we know that our material attachments, our material desires are in the way. We even pray to Krishna, oh Krishna, I don't want to be anxious about this, that, but it doesn't go away 
with the snap of a finger. Um, personally, just stay, just stay engaged in devotional service. Just yeah. and so it's a gradual process, and only through continuing the process of devotional service, chanting our rounds over a period of time, we'll find all those things going away. Is that right? And use every moment to serve Krishna. Don't waste time doing things that are not related to devotional service. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, you just stay engaged. Once you get engaged fully, you're happy. You go from one service to another, to another, finish the day, you take rest, you get up, you chant your rounds, and you look forward to the days again, and you serve, and you're just making plans how to serve, you have a plan already. You know, every moment should be, you know, in devotional service. There's so many ways you can serve. If you don't know how to serve, just ask. You <laughs> plenty of service. <laughs> <laughs> So Maharaj, so um, just as Mother Sri Devi said that the so, and from what you are sharing, Maharaj, is that the more we serve, the more it will help us to become more attached to the Lord and detached from material desires over a period of time. Is that right, Maharaj? Yeah, the spiritual energy and the material energy. Once you, the more you're serving, the more you're entering into the spiritual energy. Devotional service is not part of this material energy. It's above the three modes of material nature. Mm. Mm. Um, you just have to, you know, Nasanathan Goswami gives a formula. Understand what is, what is favorable for devotional service, what is unfavorable. Be enthusiastic, be determined, be uh, patient. Chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, serve, so serve and associate with devotees, take only Krishna Prashadam, read books such as Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and with devotion, invoke books related to devotional life, and, uh, you know, go to programs, associate with devotees, cook for devotees, so many things you can do. Hmm. Or sitting around thinking what's on television or... Uh, <laughs> Or you know, what's what's the latest news out there? I don't know if we're going to lose. Oh, there's marriage. Perfect. Namrata, did, um, do you have a question, Mataji? Go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Glories to your Lord of Speed. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is related to chanting. Uh, when I chant, uh, I most of the time my uh, thoughts are uh, towards what uh, my spiritual master is uh, is uh, instructing or what whatever I'm hearing from the class. Uh, I keep uh, uh, churning that even when I am chanting. So uh, is it an offense to or is it okay? It's not an offense, but the idea for chanting is to try to hear nicely. If the mind is thinking about devotional service, it's not an offense, but you're not getting the full benefit of the chanting. Because the world, thinking and planning about devotional service is also Krishna classes. But there's a time for everything. When you're reading, you're, you're fully engaged in devotional service if the mind is somewhere else. But it's not offense, though. So I should try concentrating on the sound only. Yeah. Okay. 
Just try to, try to hear that sound vibration. Listen carefully. Hear yourself chant. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I try a lot, yes, uh, since you tell repeatedly in the classes. So I try a lot, but it happens that uh, maybe uh, sometimes I achieve that uh, stage, but it is not uh, fixed. I, I'm not fixed on, uh, uh, you know, completely hearing. So, but uh, in it's chanting, when I'm chanting don't yeah. worry, nobody else is either. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you, you're you're like you you're like we're all fixed up and you're not. No, everybody's mind is is chanchala. Krishna says uh, Arjuna says chanchala he mana Krishna pramiti balabad dritha tasya ham nigaman manye vayuri dam sadus karam. The mind is unsteady. Like controlling the wind. But Prabhupada said for Japa, just hear. That's it. Carefully listen to the sound wave. When the mind goes off, bring it back. Catch the first syllable of the first name in the Hare Krishna mantra. When you find your mind wandering, go back to the Hare Krishna. We can reconnect through that sound vibration. And then again, with that first sound vibration. Hare Krishna. I mean, we all fight our minds. Mind is a rascal. Mm -hmm. What can we do? It's restless. But the more you practice, the more the mind will become controlled. Or not controlled, but it will become agreeable to what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Yeah. I could definitely uh, relate to your question, Namrata, because and I said the mind travels like crazy, speed of I think when I use the when I mentioned the word that the speed of light, Maharaj said nothing could beat the speed of light. Even the mind goes. <laughs> I remember your answer, Maharaj. Even the mind is quicker than the, the speed of light. <laughs> speed of light is slow. <laughs> speed of wind is faster than the speed of light, and the speed of the mind is faster than the speed of wind. I remember your answer, much last time I asked. That's what you told me. <laughs> the speed of light was 186,000 miles per second. But the speed wow. of light is faster than that. The mind is such a rascal. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Any questions from devotees? Any, uh, you can, you know, raise your hand or you could just jump right in. Um, would like to hear other devotees' questions, uh, comments, reflection. Um, let me go down here so I don't miss anybody. Is anybody wanting to say a question? I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss anyone here. I think the devotees are so, caref so careful not to ask because they don't want to lose you, Maharaj, on the Zoom. Yeah, if you keep the keep it going, then the internet will keep going. <laughs> That's how it works, right, Maharaj? Absolutely, Maharaj. And um, actually, now I remember my question. So you, you were mentioning in in response to one of my question earlier on that the more we engage in service, um, and actually you said something like um, um, as long as we don't plan for the Lord and we just surrender to the Lord and allow the Lord's plan to unveil as opposed to our plan to unveil when we say that prayer. How can we be surrendered, Maharaj, to the point where whatever the Lord wants, because sometimes the mind gets a little bit in the middle saying, oh, but, you know, I don't know if I really want this prayer. Like I like like Bhaktivedanta Swami's prayer. Right. Um, I think he had to say a prayer. Um, um 
whatever my, you want, take it. My dear, my, my, yeah, my dear Lord, please bring about any everything that I need in order to become Krishna's consciousness. My dear Lord, please take away everything that I don't need that's that's causing me not to become Krishna consciousness. Yes, Maharaj. And I remember yes, yes. when he said that prayer and he shared it with us, was, this was in Gita Nagri, that same week, two devotees got in a car accident. <laughs> it was really, really bad. And they were so scared to say the prayer because within a week, they got in a car accident. I mean, they came out alive. Thank God the car was totaled. So Maharaj, you know, so they're like, oh my God, this prayer is so powerful. So how, so they, how can we really grow Marsh to even if that happens okay whatever like that yeah I, I don't know if I'm making sense in my question Marge. Um well you make your plans to serve but be always be will be aware that your plans may also change by the will of Krishna. So just be open to Krishna's control in your life. Make your plans and try to serve in the best possible way, but use your intelligence and don't be attached to your way of doing things, but be attached to Krishna. So, you know, devotees keep a schedule and we work on this schedule, we fine tune the schedule, and it's the foundation by which we can keep a mind fixed in a series of activities so the mind doesn't wander to something material. But at the same time, you know, we have to be aware that maybe Krishna will move us this way or that way. So be open to that. Now, I'll give you an example. Like, um, all right, you're sitting in the temple room and you came in to chant your rounds. So you're sitting there chanting your rounds and the pajari comes and says, well, we're really short of a one person, the pajari, we need you to come and dress. Can you come? There's nobody else we can ask. Well, I, I, I can't hear chant my rounds, therefore I'm, you can't ask me. Is that okay? Maraj, we only got to hear the part when the when the Pujari came and approached a devotee. That's the part that it stopped. Yeah. Well, the Pujari says, my dear Lord, dear, my dear sir, um, we need you to address the deity. And you're saying, well, I came here to chant my rounds. I want to chant my rounds. Krishna is saying, we need you to do some service, and you say, well, I want to serve in this one. So be open to the fact that although you've made your plans for service, that there may be something better that comes up or something needed that comes up. Be attached to Krishna. Uh, be attached to serving, but be more attached to Krishna. In other words, whatever Krishna wants, that's what I want. Krishna works through his devotees. Krishna works uh, through the material energy to, to help us understand how best we can uh, engage in devotional service. Uh, I, my spiritual master is asking me to come to a program, but I have my own program I want to go to. So therefore, since my program came first, I can't, I can't, I can't change. But although my spiritual master is asking me, still I can. That's my. <laughs> Marge, what about a situation? <clears throat> spiritual master is a representative of Krishna. And if he's asking you to serve in this way or to do something, you should be immediately ready and eager to put that, and you should think, how can I do that as fast <laughs> as I can? 
we use a uh, we use a uh, you want you you want me to give you an ultimate statement. Yes, Maharaj. Anything that will help our Krishna, my Krishna consciousness. Okay, so I'll say something and you respond to the answer of what I'm going to say. Yes, Maharaj, I will try my best. I'm going to say one word and you're going to, you're going to answer my one word. Okay. okay. So I'm in the role of the spiritual master and I say to the disciple, John! Marja, I missed the question. The, the spiritual master says to the disciple, jump. The um, I jump. How high I have to jump? Do we just jump without saying how high or how low? Just jump because spiritual master says it. That's a Oh no. I am not liking this internet today. It's really interfering with our conversation with Oh, that's Maharaj Haribo. This is ongoing actually. Yeah, Krishna is testing our patience. Yeah. Technology is not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj is back and Sri Devi has a question. Maharaj, can you hear us? Good. We could not hear Guru Maharaj said. Oh, wait, he just got back. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Guru Maharaj, we couldn't hear you. What's the answer, Maharaj? Sri Devi wrote it in the chat. Just read it. Oh, Sri Devi. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I already read it, but that's that's the problem. I know the answer, but I don't do this. <laughs> Maharaj, I have a question. If the spiritual master says jump, and we ask the spiritual master how high, is it proper? Yeah. To ask a question, I'm trying to think, and now that's a catch twenty two, because it's like if we ask the spiritual master how high, is it asking him how high, and we just jump or just jump? Like, like I'm, I'm trying to think, is it right to ask? Okay, Maharaj, you said jump, but how high? Like, is that okay to ask, Maharaj? Yeah, because if you don't know how to jump, he can tell you how how you should jump. Hmm. Okay. In other words, one should be one should see the orders of the spiritual masses coming from Krishna Himself. Hmm. If we don't see it like that, then we don't have an understanding of bhakti. Hmm. The spiritual master is like a kind father. He's not going to give you difficulties just because he wants to make you feel bad or give you a hard time. He's trying to help you push you forward in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he has to present things in your life that you have to somehow surrender. Mm -hmm. It's his duty to hold his disciples along. He can't just let them sit there and you know wallow or vacillate. He has to push. And he does it in different ways. Sometimes directly, sometimes through programs. Mm. 
Sri Devi, go ahead with your question. I, I want to hear your question. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, today afternoon, I finished something and you asked me, can you come to Govinda's at uh, such and such a time? And my reply was, no, this doesn't work. Can I see you tomorrow? Because I had just come back after finishing that work. I had not cooked lunch. I was hungry. I had just finished having my uh, lunch and I had changed and everything. And I was thinking, oh no, now to again wear a sari and find a toto and go in the heat, etc., etc. So I said no, because I thought I'm too tired. So was that again Maya? No, because I asked you, can you? I didn't say come. He said, can you come? Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you are saved, Sri Devi. You got saved. <laughs> By the skin of my teeth, I got saved. Because the service could, could be done tomorrow or the day after. It wasn't so important. Mm. But if something that was needed right at that time, then that would have been different. And I would have made it more clear. Okay, I can breathe again. <laughs> you can breathe again, Prabhu. I can breathe again now because I just finished something important for Guru Maharaj and I had to return something. And so, anyway, Guru Maharaj, I have another question. It may seem a little unrelated, but may I go ahead and ask because this is about etiquette towards the spiritual master. So, it actually be on topic. May I go ahead? <laughs> okay. No. No? Okay. You're muted, Mataji. Anasai <laughs> Mataji, you're on mute. I'm being so careful with the mute and unmute because of it. I don't want to lose Maharaj. <laughs> I'm so scared. You didn't let me answer. Oh, no. Both of you, you and she, they were really at the time. Guru Maharaj saying yes or no? He was saying no, but with a smile on his face. So I cannot figure out. So I think we should ask Maharaj what he meant. I'm not okay. reading his mind. <laughs> he didn't like the question. But he's going to come back because he, he just went froze. So let's see what Maharaj says when he comes back. Yeah, I, he'll come back and he'll ask that and then he will address it. Because when I said, I want to ask another question and it may be not on topic, but actually it may be on topic because it's related towards the etiquette to the spiritual master. And that mm -hmm. making that gesture, no, no, like this, right? Yeah, but he had a smile on his face. So I don't, I, I can't tell if he was saying no because he's trying to pull your leg. Or whether he was saying no because he was saying no. So let I think we should ask Marge when he don't, comes back. But don't he, read too much into it. I'm not reading but, it, but we should ask Marge because the thing is, it, it became choppy. I know. Whatever he yeah, will say, it, he will say. Yeah. We may let both need back. to get off your oh, video. If you get off your video, video, who knows? And she didn't get off video also. There's Marge. <laughs> Shri Devi, can you get off video also? Let's see what happens. Hmm. Hi, Krishna, can you hear us? Anyway, technology is... Okay, great. I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. So she didn't want to do that question. Yeah, she didn't want to ask Maharaj etiquette. again. Uh, is that okay, Guru Maharaj? I have a question. When in front of Srila Prabhupada, the spirit hmm. is also there, and we are offering our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada, 
as we are leaving, should we also offer obeisances to the spiritual master in front of the deity of Srila Prabhupada? I wasn't able to hear anything. Try it again. My question is this, Guru Maharaj. In front of the deity of the Lord, we are not supposed to offer obeisances to anyone, including the spiritual master, because the deity form of the Lord is there, and that's one of the instructions. But supposing we are, say, in Prabhupada Samadhi Auditorium, and we have just offered our obeisances to Sita Prabhupada, and we are leaving that um, hall, that auditorium, and our spiritual master is also there in front of Srila Prabhupada. Is it, uh, is it the etiquette to also offer obeisances to your spiritual master before you leave the temple? Yeah. Okay. So in front of Prabhupada, yeah. I'd like to yeah, offer yeah. obeisances to the this, spiritual master. Try to listen to my answer instead of talking so much. Just listen. Um, First of all, you're wrong when you say you can't offer respects to the spiritual master in front of the deity. You can. Only your spiritual master, no, nobody else. You can offer uh, obeisances. If you're, if you're worshiping the deity and the spiritual master walks in, you can, uh, offer, you can acknowledge his presence and offer respects to him. Because he is representing Krishna. In that one sense, he's not different. So when it comes to your spiritual master, there is no restrictions for offering at any time. That's Shastra. Oh, thank you very much for clarifying. I didn't know that. I was always uh, under the wrong impression. Thank you so much for correcting me. Thank you, Marge, for also um, addressing that point because I, I think there was, um, I, I, I've heard that same misconception and misunderstanding too. Thank you for clarifying that, Marge. Any other yeah. questions? Sorry, Marge. Okay. Oh, I, I thought... I just, uh, uh, go ahead. So I have a question also about open obeisance. Sometimes this happens. Um, and it happened to me a lot. Like in Agri. Um, a sweet master comes in and somebody's gotten her atten his attention. He's talking to someone. And I show up and I see him there and I offer obeisances right away, but he's not even looking in my direction. So I offer obeisances and I go about my, you know, whatever that I have to do. So the question is, is it necessary for him to know that, or to make him know that I've offered obeisances to him or because I've offered the Christian knows and it doesn't matter and I could just go on? No, you just offer your obeisance. That's good enough. Whether he sees not, it doesn't really matter. Okay. I thought so, but that's the way I did it. But I just want now, now that we're talking about offer obeisance, I just wanted to be sure. I because obeisances is for your benefit. So as long as you're offering obeisances, then you're fulfilling the role as a disciple. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Marge, for, cl uh, for, for clarifying that point. Such an important instruction that we get to get clarified. Any other questions from devotees? Any other thoughts? Um, clarification that they need on any topic, please uh, do ask uh, before we end the class. Marge, because of the internet situation, I don't, I I'm asking, would you like to end with a round of chanting or how do you want to do it, Marge? Okay.